Welcome to another episode of 15 Minute Ferments with Austin Durant. Hey fermenters, Austin Durant here. And today I'm going to make a one of my favorite pickle recipes that I like to call No Nukes Cukes. And it's basically uh, cucumber pickles, naturally fermented of course, with three different types of peppers, varying range of heat. And uh, I found that these three particular peppers uh, just make a really nice hot, but not like, you know, blow your brains out hot uh, pickle with a nice, with some, some nice sort of peppery nuances. So that's what we're gonna make today. Um, so our ingredients are, of course, fresh uh, cucumbers. This particular style is uh, what's called a Kirby cucumber. It's designed, designed it's grown specifically to, uh, to be pickled. Uh, it's usually about you know, anywhere from four to six inches, not too much bigger than that in length. And it's got the bumps on it and it's got the, the perfect skin thickness to, uh, to hold up to a you know, 10 or 14 day ferment um, and still remain crispy. So that's kind of why this particular variety uh, is considered a pickling cucumber. You could of course use other types of cucumbers, Persian cucumbers or English or Japanese, the, the kind that you slice. I find the best performance out of a pickling when, when doing fermentation is leaving the uh, cucumbers whole. So that's kind of my preference. And um, as you can see, I've got a rather large container today. This is a two gallon uh, glass jar that we'll be using as our fermentation vessel. So I'm also gonna go ahead and pull up um, the recipe, which I encourage you to do as well. Head on over to our website and look up, which is fermentersclub.com. And just, you can either search for uh, three pepper cukes or uh, no nukes. Anyway, you'll, you'll see the recipe right here and um, it has everything you need. All right. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure our pickles, our cucumbers are clean. And that is to say that just make sure there's no visible dirt on them. And especially if these come from your garden or you have a chance to get some from directly from a farmer's market where they're just abundantly fresh, you do wanna make sure that, um, I don't have any examples here, but uh, each cucumber what, as it grows has the stem end, which is the part that hangs up the plant and the flower end, which is where you know it started off as a flower, then it became a fruit. So if there's any residual uh, flower pieces at the, uh, on the flower end, make sure to just sort of maybe rinse them off or just scrape them off. There are enzymes in that flowering end that uh, can mess up fermentation. So uh, just make sure your pickles, your cucumbers are nice and clean. Um, don't worry about you know scrubbing every little bit. In fact, if you look uh, carefully here, the sort of the whitish stuff that you see on this fruit and on lots of other fruits is called is considered the microbial bloom. So the ecosystem from which you're going to, to select by adding the right amount of salt is actually already contained here on the fruit. So we don't necessarily want to, to wash all that off, nor really could we. I mean, it turns out that these microbes, um, that the lactobacillus and the other uh, varieties are not only on, on the surface of the fruit, but they're also inside the cell wall. So it would be near impossible to sort of you know, without short of cooking the, cooking the fruit, uh, getting rid of all those microbes. So we're gonna, we're gonna use those. And uh, what I like to do is add all my sort of smaller ingredients first, then add the cucumbers on top. So um, I have these somewhat old uh, jalapeno peppers. So, you know, one way instead of, you know, throwing them on the compost heap or wor even worse, throwing them out uh, to use up old vegetables is to ferment with them. So um, most of these are good. Uh, I'm going to really just need, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be making about five pounds of uh, cucumbers today. So uh, depending on how, how hot you want it, that can be up to 10 uh, peppers. So uh, I don't like mine terribly hot. So I've got one, two, three, four, about seven peppers here. And any, I'll cut out any parts that look gnarly and then um, use that. So it's going to be a medium to hot uh, uh, end result here. So really what I want to do is just make sure that I cut the stem end off. Uh, and just any little, again, any, any little bits here uh, on these peppers that uh, that look like they're moldy or just or just soft spots. And then I'm going to split it lengthwise this way. And get, depending on how hot you want it, you can either leave it just as is, and the membranes and the seeds are really what contribute the heat most to the uh, to the jalapeno or into all uh, chili peppers. 
Uh, or if you wanted to take them out, you can scrape them out. That'll reduce the heat somewhat. So really, you're sort of modulating based on your own preference, your own family's preference for, for heat. All right, so I'm going to do that, continue to do that. I'm going to go ahead and, for this batch, I'll probably cut out about half of them and leave half of them whole. So we've got two. Now, I usually don't wind up eating these, but there's no reason why you couldn't. They're going to get pickled just like everything else. You could certainly eat them. You could cut them. Uh, but I like to leave them whole just for convenience sake right now. Um, so I am going to go ahead and scrape out, like I said, the, the insides. And usually you should wear a glove when doing this because uh, it can get very, uh, very hot. So I'm going to see if I can just utilize a leaf that I'll explain in a minute here just to kind of act as a little bit of a barrier against the heat. I'm just kind of picking, just kind of scraping the whole, most of the seeds out. And again, definitely uh, wear a glove if you're sensitive to this, and definitely don't touch your face uh, until you've thoroughly washed your hands with soap. Um, the active ingredient in all chili peppers called capsaicin can burn. So, um, so here's an example of one where I've scraped out the, the membrane, but I'm still going to get some of that, that uh, jalapeno flavor. Right, so here's one, it's got a questionable little spot here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut some bits out that look a little suspect. And like I said, I'm still using most of the fruits here, so uh, rather than toss them out, I'm making use from this one. Eh. They, if you've ever seen a jalapeno as it ripens, it, it, it can get red, so, uh, Nothing wrong with it. It's uh, it's probably just a little older than the others, so I might just omit that one. Okay, this looks a little dodgy. All right, so gone ahead and added in, added in my peppers. I'll set that aside. And next, what we want to do is add in the, uh, the two other peppers. So the two other peppers I like to use are, one is called, Cal it's sometimes called California chili powder. It's fairly mild. Um, uh, if I figure out the name of the actual botanical name of that pepper, um, I will put it in the notes uh, that you can see below. But uh, here around here, we're in Southern California, that's, you often just call it, see it called California chili. And this is actually rather mild. It still lends some depth of flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, um, the recipe calls for about a half teaspoon per pound of cukes. So that's almost a full tablespoon, uh, translated up to a five pound batch that I'm making. So you just shy of a, of a tablespoon here. And then the other powder is cayenne, cayenne peppers. So if you had access to fresh cayenne pepper, you could, you could certainly use it. Um, but I'm, I cheat right now and I have the powder. So, um, and a combination of fresh peppers and powder is fine to do. It'll actually give a little bit of a different flavor um, versus using the fresh stuff. So again, about a half a teaspoon per pound translates to almost a full tablespoon for five pounds. All right, so we're almost there. This is telling you 50 minute ferments, probably more than we need to make this batch. Um, so the one of the tricks of the trade that uh, fermenting picklers use is some type of leaf that has tannins in it. Now tannins are uh, compounds that help, that what they wind up doing is supporting the cell walls. They keep the cell walls of a fruit uh, firm. So that's kind of one of the secrets to a crispy pickle. So a grape leaf, which is what I've got here, is uh, one of the more commonly used leaves. You could also use a fig leaf, an oak leaf, and also uh, leaves from certain fruits like your palms and your stone fruit. So that would be apricots, plums, peaches, or apples or pears. So any leaves of those, basically if the fruit has some kind of astringency or you know, that's, that's a sign that it's got tannins and uh, it's good to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the leaf in. I've got, again, I've got two large grape leaves now. Again, think about grapes and wine, it's very astringent. So that um, these leaves contribute the tann tannins or tannic acid to mix. So. All right, so I've got that. And next is I'm going to start stacking in my cucumbers. So I've got, again, I've got these uh, Kirby's. And I've got a really large vessel here. I'm not going to be filling it up. So I'm not too worried about, you know, sort of uh, making sure these uh, these all have a, you know, 
a sort of a Tetris. If you if you're old enough to remember that video game where you sort of had to put all the squares together. We don't really have to Tetris this batch because I'm using a very large vessel. So I'm just gonna still gonna do my best to kind of create layers. And if I come across any cukes that have like deep blemishes, like I found one earlier, I was doing a QA check. There's it's got this uh, kind of like brownish spot. Rather than chance it, I'm just going to set that one aside um, because a, a you know one bad cucumber, as they say, can potentially mess up the fermentation and mess other things up. And you don't want to be the guy or the gal that gets that that mushy cuke. So um, I just leave it aside. If it's just got sort of the normal scars from growing, that's not a big deal. You can kind of see those are just normal, normal growth scars. But um, when it's kind of mushy or moldy uh, or soft, uh, definitely uh, you can call the herd, so to speak. So, all right, so I'm just gonna add these in layers. You could also add garlic if you wanted to. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna keep this kind of like straight up, three nukes, no, no nukes, three pepper cukes. All right, I've got, and because I'm using this vessel, I also have the luxury of adding, you know, some of the larger cukes. Uh, to me, the sort of the perfect cucumber, the perfect pickling cuke is one that's about this big. This is a little over three inches. This one's closer to you know, maybe five or six inches. Nothing wrong with it, of course, but um, I think just from a, from a, you know, knowing what a, a cuke, uh, pickle is, um, the smaller ones tend to be just sort of like what we know as our classic cuke. All right, so I've got uh, all my cukes added. And then the final ingredient is the brine. So the brine is very important because adding the right amount of salt uh, will modulate the, the fermentation activity. If we just added fresh water to this, for example, it would get nice and moldy. Everybody, all the pathogens, all of the microbes would come to the party and um, we wouldn't get a fermented pickle. So we use salt as a microbial inhibitor and I'm gonna make about a 5% strength brine. And what that means is I take the weight of water well, so what I've done is I've calculated based on five pounds, I need about 1.6 liters of water. So um, I'm going to take 5% of that number, which would be about 80. Uh, so a liter, a gram of water uh, weigh a liter, or sorry, a milliliter of water weighs a gram. So the metric system is simple that way. So 1.6 liters weighs 1.6 kilograms. And so 5% of that is 80 grams, which is a convenient way to measure our salt. So all I'm gonna do, and I'll put this for that formula in the, in the notes here below. All right, so I'm just gonna use my kitchen scale. And if you don't have a kitchen scale, this winds up being about just under three tablespoons or, or for about 40 or so milliliters of salt per liter of water or quart of water. So about three tablespoons per quart. But I highly encourage you, if you watch any of my other videos, get a kitchen scale. It makes fermentation easy. It makes cleanup uh, straightforward. And you'll maybe learn some new math. All right, so I'm set, I've already pre-weighed the water, and plus I'm, it's in a pitcher here. So I've got about said 1.6 or so liters. So I'm going to zero my scale. And then I'm just going to pour in salt until I, the scale reaches 80 grams. I like to use this fine sea salt here, um, where the only ingredient is just salt. Uh, you want to avoid salts that, that have other ingredients like anti-caking agents, and even iodine is not, um, is not great. So uh, just you know, there are plenty of uh, salts with, with trace uh, minerals in them, such as the Himalayan salt or the Celtic salt, or the, uh, uh, there's a local one around here, uh, it's called Baja Gold, it comes from our, our the Sea of Cortez, which is really close by. So really whatever is uh, available to you, those trace mineral salts work wonderfully for uh, fermentation. They don't uh, negatively impact the, uh, the fermentation activity. All right, so um, there we go, 80, perfect. Now all I really need to do is dissolve this um, so that the, you can't see the salt. And then once we do that, our brine will be ready. You could uh, warm up the water if you wanted to beforehand, but uh, not really necessary. And if you do, you don't want it to be too hot because remember, we're trying to ferment things at room temperature and the hotter we get something, the more likely it is to actually kill um, 
the both the good and the bad microbes, which is not what we're doing here. We want to, we want to encourage the good guys while keeping the bad guys at bay. And so just stir it until you don't see any uh, any any of the salt still left in the brine. So we're good to go here. So now the all we got to do is basically cover the surface of what we're fermenting in. So hopefully, uh, if I've done my math, we'll have just enough brine to cover the top of the pickles. Now it's important to keep all the vegetables that you're fermenting submerged under the brine because uh, it's an anaerobic process. It does not require air. So uh, we want to the fermentation activity to happen beneath the surface. And um, uh, that will also keep out our uh, airborne microbes that we don't want to do the fermentation. Those are yeasts and molds. They're not involved in this type of uh, fermentation. So the best thing to do is just keep everything submerged and keep the, uh, create a barrier between the air and uh, what we're fermenting. All right, so probably edit this part out, but looks like we came up a little bit short. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix another I don't know, half a liter of brine or so. And hopefully that will do the trick. All right, so we've got another liter. So 5% of 1,000 is 50. All right, so I'm going to zero out my scale. And add 50 grams of salt. And we're making a 5% brine. There we go, perfect. Stir it up. So we've got our uh, second batch here. I'm just going to top it up. All right, now our pickles are floating. Cucumbers are floating, which tells us that we've got enough brine. So next thing we want to do is, as we prepare this for fermentation, um, if you've got it, go ahead and use a, a, a little extra pickle brine from a previous batch. You could also use sauerkraut brine. Um, probably could, you could even use kombucha. But if you've got pickle brine, this is already chock full of the, um, the good microbes that we're trying to cultivate. So it's kind of like a little bit of a fertilizer, if you will. So um, if you don't have it, it's not a big deal. It's not, that, it's not that important that you will still have success if you start off with good ingredients. But it's like an insurance policy. So, all right, so we've got our uh, everything set. You can kind of see things are wanting to float. So the next thing we want to do is use some kind of weight. And that weight is going to help keep the cucumbers submerged while they're fermenting under the brine. Because as you know, most fruits and vegetables are mostly water, so they want to flow. So uh, I have a, happen to have a, a river rock that I got from my backyard that fits into the nicely into the diameter of this thing. So I'm just going to kind of set it on top here. You could also use a plate. You could also use a zip top bag uh, that's um, filled with water, and that'll actually take the shape of the vessel. So uh, again, I just want to make sure that maybe one or two little guys are going are gonna to want to stick up. Um, just do your best, find something that's even and flat that can keep the vegetable submerged under the run. So now we're ready to just cover this and let it ferment. So I like to use just a standard dish towel. Just make sure it, you know, it's breathable, something that covers over the diameter of the vessel that you're fermenting in. And then let's see here. I should have um, some twist ties, which make great things to secure. Uh, if you've got like elastic bands, those work great. Large rubber bands will also work great, but um, uh, twist ties tied sort of tied, looped together will also work great. So my brother recently pointed these out to me. These are uh, hair bands and they're somewhat elastic. So these I think will make a perfect um, band to secure uh, this. I got these at the dollar store. They're very inexpensive and reusable, which is one thing I really like to 
practice. All right, so pick my color. I think I'll use my blingy uh, rhinestone one and then just sort of secure it around. And we're doing this in order to keep flies and dust out. So this has a nice uh, secure uh, setup now. And I'm gonna go ahead and label my jar so that I know what day I started it. Leave it on the shelf here and then come check on it in a, starting at about nine or 10 days. So the warmer it is in your environment, the faster things ferment. Around here, we're kind of in a Mediterranean climate. Things go, uh, pickles usually are around 10 to 14 days. So I'm not even gonna bother checking on it till at least that 10th day. And um, then we're gonna taste these and we're gonna have a party in your mouth. So that's it for this episode of 15 Minute Ferments. I'm Austin Durant, thanks for watching.